a very important type of diagnostic blood test is one known as a differential white blood cell count in which one counts the different kinds of white blood cells and their relative abundance. And based on this, uh, one gets an idea of the type of infection that a patient might have. These different types of white blood cells have fixed percentages in average patients. And when one notices a deviation from the norm, it is indicative of something going on inside the patient. And so it can be useful as a diagnostic. With coronavirus, it is not only important to identify those changes observed during an infection, but also those changes which might distinguish between those which have mild cases from which they may recover fully uh, to more severe cases which might uh, require intensive care uh, or perhaps even potentially lead to death. So the better one can separate severe cases from mild cases, the better care one can provide for patients. It is observed that the number of lymphocytes decreases in coronavirus infections. The reason is not entirely clear at present, but it could be that the coronavirus directly infects the lymphocytes themselves. Coronavirus promotes uh, the programmed cell death or apoptosis of lymphocytes, perhaps by the dysregulation of the synthesis of the signal interferon. Uh, perhaps coronavirus results in destructive effects on the lymphatic tissues where lymphocytes are produced or mature, or in other ways inhibits lymphocytes. Of the types of lymphocytes, it seems that the cytotoxic T lymphocytes and the helper T lymphocytes decrease the most and most consistently across patients, while B lymphocytes and the related NK cells uh, also uh, decrease, but perhaps to a lesser degree. And something similar was observed in the SARS coronavirus 1 uh, pathology. The number of neutrophils can greatly increase during a coronavirus infection. And this is not unexpected since neutrophils uh, increase during inflammation and the cytokine storm, the great increase in the production of local hormones associated with coronavirus increases the number of pro-inflammatory signals. Also, the decreased number of lymphocytes could contribute to the dysregulation of immune pathways. Given that coronavirus can be associated with both a decrease in the number of lymphocytes and an increase in the number of neutrophils, an apparent important diagnostic is the neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. 95% of healthy people have a NLR, a neutrocyte to lymphocyte ratio, less than 3.5. In other words, uh, for every lymphocyte, there is less than three and a half neutrophils, which outnumber them, um, in uh, a specific quantity of blood. However, this number can change. So as an individual experiences uh, illness and stress, uh, an NLR, a neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, can uh, increase to six to nine in moderate uh, stress. So in other words, there might be six or nine neutrophils for every lymphocyte, or it might uh, increase over 18 during severe stress. Critically ill patients have had NLRs which have approached 100. One of the great challenges for healthcare workers is to distinguish between mild to moderate cases of coronavirus and those which are severe or potentially life-threatening. And thus a useful diagnostic is this neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio. If one has three patients and is considering whether they should be dismissed from the hospital or whether they should go into intensive care or be monitored more closely or receive uh, more intensive um, interventions such as anti-inflammatories, uh, which will decrease uh, the number of pro-inflammatory cytokines. Uh, this count is useful. In these three patients, which of these do you feel has the greatest danger of severe illness 
and a negative outcome. 